Let's talk about what it might mean to own a job. Let's start with my story. Back in 1997, I started a tent rental business. And by the end of 1998, I had two seasons under my belt. And I realized at that point, I might own a job. What that meant for me was when I looked at my profit and loss and realized how much profit I had or money, the money that I was getting paid, Somebody else in the marketplace doing some other job would have paid me for the skill set that I had, the same amount of money. And additionally, I had extra liabilities, extra responsibilities. I had responsibilities to the family of those people that were under my employment. I had responsibilities to the bank and the debts. I had responsibilities for paychecks and a number of other responsibilities. So I was getting paid the same amount that somebody else would pay me for. I had all these extra stresses in my life. And I worried about them pretty much all day long. I had a decision to make at that point. Either A, I get rid of that business and go to work for somebody else, or B, I become better at that business. I chose the latter one, B, to become better at that business. There were a few challenges I knew were right in front of me. For me, I had to change my management style. I had to begin to bring other people in with great skill sets and teach them the jobs that I knew and teach them in such a way that they could do the job without my supervision. I brought the best people in and I expected them to do a great job. And when they didn't, weren't able to fulfill that job, I had to replace them and get the people for that particular job they could do the best job there. That was a challenge for me. The second challenge for me was to really intimately understand my financial numbers. I had to understand my revenue side and everything about my expenses so that most importantly, I would have a bigger profit at the end of the year. A profit that I could choose to reinvest into my business or take a great portion of it for myself. Without having a great profit at the end of the year, bigger than what my normal paycheck was, I wouldn't have that option. The last and final challenge I had as a growing business was that I had to stay focused on this task at hand, becoming a better company, a more profitable company. And I first chose to focus my efforts on the financial aspect of that. The financial aspect, understanding the revenue side, the money in, as well as the expense side to get that better profit. And when we look at the financial side, the revenue stream, we understood that we were a growing company, that sales were on the increase, increase in customers coming to us. But that also meant that the money that I had left over, the profit, I had to plow that back into the company because we had to buy more inventory and more things to keep up with that increase in sales. So at the end of that, any particular year, I took what was earmarked for me and I had to reinvest it in that company. So I wanted to stop that for this year. I wanted to stop the first year out and I wanted to do the same exact revenues and instead, to gain a bigger profit, focus on my expenses. Because we, as we had grown, we had not focused yet on our expenses. And when we focused on those expenses, we wanted to focus on being really, really efficient in our business. We knew the more efficiency that we would have, the, the, the expenses would be driven down and our profit would be bigger. And as we learned to become more efficient, we could then make the decision to grow our company and take those efficiencies and those lessons that we learned into to larger scales, into a larger company. Same exact ideas, same exact lessons, and become more profitable at a larger level. So year number one, we focused on our expenses and the efficiencies of everything that we did. And we chose to look at our efficiencies in two ways. The first way was to look at our methods, how we did things. The second way was to look at mechanizing whatever we could. Let's talk about the methods. We wanted to, we took, we took a look at how we did everything. We stood in the shadows and we just observed. We counted the number of trips made back and forth. We counted the time it did, it didn't do any particular task. And we brainstormed to see how we could make that better. What would it be? We had great people, so it wasn't a laziness factor, for the most part. It was just a matter we had rearranged in what we had. We did things like bring an evening crew in, because we realized, especially in our business time, our busy time, that our men would come back and they were fatigued. And when we asked them to unload the truck and reload the truck so they could be ready first thing in the morning to go back out, after a period of about two weeks, they just got tired and they started making mistakes. The mistakes that because they were skilled people, they normally wouldn't make, but they were just flat tired. So we brought evening crews in so that this crew could go home at a normal time, 
we didn't have to pay them overtime. And this evening crew is then fresh and could skillfully load the truck. They had a better skill set and a little bit more detailed also. We looked for those type of people. So when those crews came back in the morning, that truck was loaded accurately and there were no mistakes made during that next day. Trips they had to come back to get, to get parts that were misloaded, misloaded and so forth. We looked at other things like fueling. We would send trucks out with four and five people on and they stopped at the fueling station to refuel. One man would hop out to refuel while the other sat and watched him. This sometimes would take 15 to 20 minutes. If we multiply that 15 to 20 minutes by four to five men, often we were paying out an hour to an hour and a half of wages just to get the truck filled up with fuel. These were wages that were non-productive wages. They weren't even out there making us revenue. We multiplied this for every, every truck that we had by how often we did it throughout the course of a year, it became a big number. So we found that we could actually store on site in our warehouse or outside of our warehouse fuel. And when we did that, we actually had our evening crew, one of our men in the evening crew, spend a half an hour each evening topping off every truck that we owned. So we had a great savings over the course of the year and just that thing alone. And it was all kind of odd as we worked through our methods, some other things would creep up by accident. For instance, when we were looking at the fueling and this man started doing that, we also realized that we were paying somebody else to wash our trucks because we had a high image company. We wanted everything we had to do very clean and professional. This man, for a few extra half an hour, 45 minutes or so, could keep every truck clean every day. So we had trucks clean more often for much less cost than we had before. So just the process of going through our methods exposed other things that we were blind to. We also rearranged our warehouse. We probably did this four or five times, but it was important to us. As we watched the men load very common items, very often those items were located in the back of the warehouse, way away from where the trucks were. So they'd make a trip back, grab this item, and come back. So well, if, we loaded the, if, we, if we located those items towards the front of the warehouse, it was much easier in smaller trips back and forth. So most common items towards the front, least commons in the back. Additionally, as we rearranged our warehouse, we also took a look at each item that was sitting on the shelf. And what we did, we understood the revenue that that particular item bought us, as well as the expense it, it we had incurred by having it on the shelf. Once, if, if the revenue didn't cover the expense, we had a choice. Either get rid of the piece or relocate it. We relocated longer term storage, which was much cheaper, and then free up that space to put an item on there that would bring us bigger revenue over the course of a year. All that in rearranging our warehouse over the course of a year brought us a little bit more profit. We also looked at mechanizing. When we, want, we wanted to mechanize anything in our company that was highly repetitive. We all wanted to mechanize anything in our company that was unsafe. We wanted to, rec to mechanize things in our company that offered our people high fatigue rate, especially in the busy time. For again, we noticed that after about two weeks, even our most skilled and strongest laborers started to slow down, and their production slowed down. When their production slowed down, our revenues slowed down. So we wanted to be able to keep them going. These men had the will to do it, but we wanted to keep them at their top production rates longer into the busy season than we had, not just a mere two weeks. By reducing the fatigue factor, we could extend that for them and increase our revenues, our production rates as well as, as reduce our expenses. We also wanted to address anything that had to do with quality control, at least the human element in quality control. We had a high image type country, uh, company, and human element and quality control can often mess up. But if we can mechanize that, we knew each time that piece was addressed that the, the quality of that would be the same. Just to give you an example of some of the things that we mechanized. We developed washing machines specifically designed to wash tents. We developed processes and mechanization to dry tents. We took a look at driving stakes, pulling stakes, anything to do with handling the heavy stakes. And we mechanized all that. We took a look at our warehouse. We mechanized as much as we could in there. We looked at material handling out in the job site. We mechanized as much as we could there. Since 1998, we've come a long way in our thoughts of methods, in our thoughts of mechanizing. But we've also listened to other people along the way. But we understood what they had to say and what they had to contribute to the conversation and collaborate with us. And we'd like to understand well, what you have to say for certainly you have experiences that we don't. Take a look at our blog and comment what you've heard. Help us understand a little bit more about your tent rental business. Thank you.